Hey gang, what's going on? And welcome to Talk in Vegas All Day with K.A. I'm your host, K.A., and I got a real fun episode for you today as we talk about the most unique places in Las Vegas, according to K.A. These are places that are odd, unique, have some history to it, or maybe just are found exclusively in Las Vegas. That interests me. That said, I'd like to open it up to you guys. After listening to this episode, if there's some places that are unique in Las Vegas that you enjoy, comment below. Love to know about them. Maybe I'll add them in a future episode. But before we go ahead and get started, make sure to hit like, click subscribe, and punch that notification bell so you get up-to-date information when we drop new episodes each week. And if you're listening on the podcast, give us a five-star review and give us a comment. We'd love to hear how we're doing. Let's go ahead and get started on Talking Vegas all day with me, K.A. We're going to start out today's list with the Mantis. Now, the Mantis is located at Container Park which is at Fremont East in downtown Las Vegas. And it's sort of the icon of Container Park when you walk into it. It's a big architectural structure that sits in front of the main entrance. The 40-foot tall flame spring artwork, which spews fire from its antenna and blares music from its 4,000 watt sound system, apparently speaks 20 different languages. Now, when I've been through there, I've heard it say a few different things. I didn't know it was up to 20, so I found that interesting. The massive metallic beast was built and debuted at the famed Burning Man Festival, which, for its fire and its size, makes sense. And it also is a portable thing. You can move this around, and it still makes appearances at festivals today. I'm going to say this about the Mantis. She artistically is very well done. The artist that made this structure did a wonderful job of using different metallic pieces to structure, put together. And I really think that it's a beautiful piece, whether you're viewing it during the day, it's a great picture opportunity. And at night with the lights, how it lights up, shoots the flames. It's a definite attraction that is very Vegas-esque, but also if you're just walking by it during the day, you're kind of like, oh, what's that doing there? But at night, I really feel that it gives that extra oomph to Container Park. Next on our list, if you're looking for a fun, adult-friendly amusement park or something that as a kid, you like to play construction in the sandbox, well, I got something for you. Next on our list is Dig This. The tagline says it exactly. Have you ever wanted to play in the sandbox as an adult with heavy machinery? Now, a little backstory on this park. Dig This was the brainchild of Ed Mum, who grew up in New Zealand, was building houses in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, when he first was allowed to drive an excavator. He felt like his boyhood dream came true the second he started operating heavy machinery. If you want to dig a big hole in the ground, done. You want to move a lot of dirt? Done. This theme park is five acres of construction fun. I've driven by, I've never done it, but when I've looked at reviews on Yelp, it's pretty much that. They give you a crash course on how to operate the equipment, and then they pretty much let you go. You know, obviously you sign a safety waiver, but the reviews are fun. You get to dig earth, move things. It's something different that you don't see every day. And as far as I know, it's the only one in the world. There might be more, so if there, please correct me. But definitely I found that unique and something that with my upcoming trip, my wife and I, J.A., have discussed possibly doing as we both think that would be a lot of fun. Next one on our list, I chuckle because it's kind of the social media craze and whoever came up with this idea has a billion dollar invention. And this is a franchise, however, I did see this when I googled some unique attractions and the name says it all. It's called the Selfie World Las Vegas. Now they have them all over the US. However, when I looked into it, first I kind of chuckled because it's like, oh great, you know, this is a Gen Z kind of thing, which makes sense. It's targeting to a younger audience. 
And I'm like, I don't get it. But then I saw the structures and the artistic rooms and how the things were done. And it's very quite beautiful and looks like a lot of fun. The concept is basically you go into this museum and they have different rooms where you can take selfies of yourself with unique and immersive backdrops. And I have to say, having an artistic mind, I find some of these backdrops quite excellent. It's a very unique concept. Now, is it for me? No. But for a lot of you listening that are very active on social media and like doing this stuff, maybe you're an influencer. This is a place that you would love and fits Las Vegas perfectly. Next on our list is a place I've been wanting to go to for some time, and I'm sure it's very popular. You guys know him, and that's Zach Baggins. You know his show Ghost Hunter. He has a haunted mansion. Basically, it's an actual haunted mansion, but he also has a haunted mansion ride in downtown Las Vegas. The host of Ghost Hunters bought an old haunted mansion. Basically, the rumor is the former owner was into satanic rituals, cursed the house, his ghost still haunts the house. You hear the whole thing, yada, yada. The difference of this place is he put all these things from the cult, serial killers, things from popular horror and genre, and real artifacts and cursed items. In fact, this place has so many, should I say, cursed stuff that you actually have to sign a waiver just to go visit. Zach frequents the place so you might run into him but during the haunted tours you're told not to touch anything and there are some very unique attractions in there including the dibbit box which is one of the most cursed items in the world and you can see them on youtube when people supposedly buy off the dark web these dibbit boxes there's something you don't want to mess in they house a demonic entity so if you like the occult you like the weird you like cursed object and why it's very vegas is because it's got so much of it. It's over the top, just like Las Vegas. And it's a place I really want to visit because I do like the paranormal and supernatural. Next on our list is located in Samstown. That's Mystic Park Falls. From their website, take a leisurely stroll, midnight park during the day or night at Samstown. Relax the sounds of rolling waterfalls, soft chirping birds, live trees reaching up towards the 10 story skyline above now this is a really unique place because basically it's a living environment inside of samstown i've been to samstown once i've walked through it i didn't spend a lot of time there but it was simply beautiful and i would say it's similar to the conservatory at the bellagio only at a 10 times grander scale and it's indoors other neat thing about it is You know, they have laser shows, concerts, and parties. The reviews are amazing on this place. People love it. They have nothing but great things to say about it. And finally, another place I've driven by, and I thought it was really cool because it was at a person's house, and that is Shangri-La Prehistoric Park, located in Henderson, Nevada. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Prehistoric Park? Well, dinosaurs obviously were in the Mojave Desert. This place kind of pays tribute to that, and also has a really cool story behind it. So Dinoman Steve Springer is a retired school teacher from the Clark County School District with a passion for dinosaurs, education, and making people smile. And that's great. This guy basically spent his time, his money to build something that would make people smile and educate them at the same time and follow a passion of his, sort of like I do with this show. It was established in 2006 strives to educate visitors on prehistoric creatures with events showing the relationship of what is presently occurring in the world the park's mission is to provide smiles and joy for all visitors and that's just awesome the park is currently home to 57 dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures now again i haven't been here i think it's really cool that this guy took his house and created this park around it to educate people driven by and every time i have it's been packed The other great thing about this is he donates a lot of his money and profits to charitable causes for education, preservation, etc., which is awesome to see. So he's not just getting rich off of So that's all the time we have on today's show. Make sure to leave a comment below. Tell me, what are some unique experiences in Las Vegas that you really enjoy visiting? I'd love to hear from them. And again, make sure to hit like, click subscribe on your way out. 
Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. I'm going to post some really cool pictures with the upcoming trip. It's going to get really active. And follow the podcast again on Apple, Spotify, and other major platforms. And thanks for tuning in today. Great to have you join me. And I'll see you next time on Talking Vegas All Day with me, K.A.